Good morning. It's Jane from Surface Anthology and Chalk Mercantile. Hope you're all doing well. I wanted to continue with our, our barn quilt painted board today. We're going to be marking it. So I'm going to show you guys how I mark my design onto the wood. And I'm going to show you a way that's really cool and that you won't have to worry about erasing any lines or anything like that. So it makes it super easy. Before I do that, I want to do a quick um, sneak peek because it's Christmas in July. And my next Merrymakers Ornament of the Month block, I'm going to do a little sneak peek of what we're making. And as you'll see here, there's all these different building shapes. So we're going to be making a little Christmas village and um, using a couple of techniques. So this is just a one part of the Merry Makers Ornament of the Month box that will ship out. You order it this month, you could go to surfaceanthology.com and then it ships out by the 8th of August. So you'll be making your little um, Christmas village, which I'm so excited about. All right, back to our barn quilt board. So it had a chance to really dry out, and I love, love, love the color. And I wanted to show you guys, remember the other side, which was painted or, or treated with a poly, but I used the other side to do a test, and I really, really highly recommend this. Um, you could also design something that has a design, one design on one side, flip it over and you do another cool design on the other side. You can make it seasonal or whatever, different themes and stuff. Um, the, the poly, and you'll see here, even though I, I, sand, I cleaned it and I sanded it, it's still, um, you know, it's not super absorbent, but I got some really neat effects. So I tried the honeycomb pattern. Remember our, get my ruler out of the way. Remember our, um, I'm calling it a honeycomb. It's an oct, no, octagon. It's octagon eight, hexagon. It's a hexagon. <laughs> So I decided, I think what I'm going to do on the other side is the hexagon design. Because I put two designs here, and you, you, let me see if I can hold them up. This one is, down at the end, is a quilt block. And you could see that design there, and I started painting it. I am going to finish it. But it's um, last month's quilt design. So I tried that out. And then I just took, because if you remember, we had these two sizes of hexagon, and then I had these templates, because I do English paper piecing, and you use paper, and it's kind of a medium size. So I decided to kind of draw some of them out, and I started painting them in different colors of blue with a an off-white, and the reason it looks off-white it is uh, Miss Mustard Seeds Farmhouse White that I used, which is a beautiful creamy white, but we're getting a little bit of bleeding, so the paint is absorbing some of the finish that's under here, and I don't mind it at all. I actually really love the color that was created. This is another brand of um, milk paint. This is Amy Howard because I really like this bright blue, but boy oh boy, it did not like the surface at all. Um, the Miss Mustard Seed did some beautiful chipping. Let's see if I can get that up there. But some chipping, and I, it, I kind of helped it along with my um, sanding block to get it to chip even more. Now, this does not mean that one milk paint line is better than another, but you need to know how your paint lines work, how they work with the surface that you're working on, because they may respond differently. 
So not all paints react the same way. Um, so I always encourage people to do a test, but it really, I will probably, and this is a, a little um, hexagon that I mixed the two colors from the two different lines, but I will probably, you know, scrape this off and just tape it out again and continue on with the Miss Mustard Seed for this particular project. And there's beautiful colors in the Miss Mustard Seed line, so I'm going to have fun. So anyway, that's that's what it they, it looks like. And I also think I'm going to put this next to my door on the exterior of my house. It does have a slight overhang. And as you guys know, I posted picture if you go to Surface Anthology Instagram. I've posted pictures of my barn quilts that come in the painted block of the month subscription box. So I have two subscription boxes, the Merry Makers painted and the painted block of the month. And I paint those in chalk paint and I wax them and I've had them on the outside of my house hanging. You know, I just put them outside. I have some inside, but I love putting them outside and they do really well. I don't, they're not exposed to the direct weather. Um, like my garage has a little overhang, but they've gotten wet and stuff and they've done really, really, really well outside. So another little test I've done. So now I'm going to flip this over to show you guys how I mark this board. So you have to think about how are you going to hang this? Are you going to hang it the long way going up? Are you going to hang it, you know, vertically? And with an old piece like this, it's got a, you know, a, a broken side. You, you really can't count on any of the lines being super square. So I drew a line. Um, I kind of fudged it a little because, I, as I said, I'm going to hang it up vertically. So I wanted to draw a line down the side so I could begin putting my templates there and tracing them out. And that's what I did. And if you do mess up a little bit and, and it's not quite square, like you do a, a square design and you go to hang it and the design is wonky, you can always adjust by the way you hang it, right? So, so you can adjust the hanger. There's different things that you can do to fix that. So don't panic if that happens. And anyway, it's a quilt and you know we're painting a quilt block. So those aren't all, I mean, there are master quilters that their quilts are absolutely square and perfect. Well, I'm not one of them, so I don't get myself crazy. So what I'm going to use is something called the Pilot Friction Pen. I've been using these pens for year, years. They're erasable ink pens. And the way it works is with heat. So when you go to write with one of these pens and you erase it, you're creating friction, you're creating heat, and it erases the line. When you're doing something like this and you're marking out that line, which you really can't see because this is kind of mottly and dark, but if you were doing this on a white painted surface, which I, I do a lot, you would just take a blow dryer on high or you take an iron, like a steam iron, you don't you know touch the surface, but you kind of levitate like an inch above and the heat just permanently removes the ink from these pens. So I really love them. I'm not sure I would use them when I'm doing embroidery, like on white linen, I'd be afraid of maybe something coming back later, though I have never seen it, but I certainly love using it like this and I love using it for when I'm making notes and actually writing. So what I do is I take my template and remember, I drew a line and I left all the square nails and stuff here. So let's see, where is my line? There it is. So my ruler is kind of lumpy, but I just drew a line. And once you get your rows of your template started, you don't really have to worry 
because you want to keep those kind of square. And then I just take my template. Let's move this down. We're going to start. This is going to be my top. And I'm going to line it up with the edge. The edge is going up against that line. And then I'm just going to trace it with my friction pen. Super easy. And you can get these templates. Go to Pinterest. Um, I've got a couple of quilty friends, Amy Ellis. Oh my God, I forgot the name of her company, but there's Amy Ellis, there's Menon, and her, oh my God, I'm gonna put it in the comments. <laughs> I forgot names, I've been terrible with names. I've always been that way. But there are two quilty people who send out a lot of free blocks and stuff. So um, even if you're not a quilter, this is just so much fun. And there's something really homey and beautiful about painting a quilt block. So there's, you can see that hexagon. There's the first one. And I just continue with my design. And the great thing about this pen is if I don't like it, I could just, you know, get my blow dryer and erase the line and it's gone. This wood is very not smooth. So I'm going over it a few times. So there's you could see it there's the next one there it is so I'm just gonna kind of move down and if you have any questions please ask I think I set this up for if you guys have any questions at all put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them I should be able to see them if they come up now when I go to paint this I am using tape I'm not um, kind of free handing, you know, using a brush and staying within the lines, especially with milk paint. I'm using milk paint. Milk paint tends to be thinner and I don't want it flooding in. I want to keep the lines really crisp. I'm going to do a lot of distressing. So I want to keep them originally super crisp on, um, you know, the, the colors separate. Okay, I'll do one more, and then I want to show you how I do a block using carbon paper. Okay, one more. Now, if you're working on it and using the friction pen, you don't want to leave this in the hot, like the sun or anything like that in a hot window because your design will disappear and you'll be super sad. But there's some of the beginnings of, and you can see them, I know it's a little hard, but I can see them really well where I am, of my hexagons. Now, for you guys, let's see if I have room back here. Nope, I'll draw it over here and I can always get rid of it. For you guys that might wanna do a block, we're using good old fashioned carbon paper and this does come in all different colors. It's called Sorrel paper, white, blue, red, you name it. It is not erasable like the friction pen. So when you put a line down with this, it's pretty much there. It's on your surface. Um, another way you could do this is by using, grabbing a piece of white paper and putting chalk, white chalk on it the back and use that as your carbon paper and that will be removable. This is not, so you have to be careful about that. But what I do with this is again, I would line, line this up and for, there we go. And then I have some of my favorite frog tape. And you're gonna tape your template down. Oh, 
Well, I'm not gonna be super fussy because I'm not actually gonna be painting this on the side. But we wanna tape our design down. And for you guys that are in my um, Painted Block of the Month subscription, our little club, you've got all your templates. So you can use those over and over again for all these designs. And then you take your carbon paper, shiny, waxy side down, just slip it underneath, and then I have this really great ruler. And by the way, for you guys that when you get my thank you card and I ask you to share, share your work for this, uh, you know, for the Painted Black of the Month or Merry Makers, this may be one of the extra gifts that you get in um, your box. So I'm gonna, ha I have a little raffle and whoever does all the sharing, you have your little check, check boxes, will get an extra um, special supply or tool. And this may be one of them. This is an Omni Grid. I love these rulers. They're made in the USA and they're just great. I use them for quilting. I use them for everything. So then I'm going to just take a pencil. We don't want to waste our ink. And I'm just going to trace or actually just go over the lines with my ruler. And it does not get easier than this. The only issue I'm having, like the ruler is not laying flat because there's a nail there. Now, do you guys find yourselves now um, doing any kind of exterior projects like this? I've got my little pots that I painted in the Miss Mustard Seeds um, milk paint out. I, have, I haven't put any plants in them yet, but um, I've got them outside and I just, I love them. I like to, them to get a little more aged. Now as I'm going along, and of course I'm chatting so I could lose my spot here, I lift and you could see the lines forming to see, okay, what it, where am I? You know, and I, and you can do that because you have it taped. You don't wanna just leave it. You need to tape it down so it stays put. All right. And then I'll just do all these little triangles. And the way I do this in to keep myself sort of organized is like, all right, I'm gonna do all the ones going in this direction first. And then the other way next. So you've got to be careful. You see what I just did? I let my pencil go. I now have these carbon lines that are going extending beyond the design. So don't do what I did. It doesn't bother me with this piece of wood, but that's something you want to be really, really careful about. Say this was painted a beautiful, pristine white and you're dragging your lines out, you'll have to repaint and you won't be very happy. So do as I say, not as I do. And I'm not sure. There we go. All right, now we'll go the other direction. It's been hot to do projects actually outside, but I love doing projects that I can put outside of my home. Um, like the picture I posted of the quilt blocks, the um, painted barn quilts on the outside of my garage. It's one of my sons even told me, he drove up and he's like, wow, I really love seeing those. And that's high praise from a millennial young male. <laughs> likes my my quilt blocks but he said 
you know, the colors were really nice. They reflected nature, and I do think about that when I'm designing them. So I was quite flattered. All right, I think this is done. And yeah, you could see. So here is our quilt block marked out very, very easily just by using a template, a ruler, carbon paper, and a pencil. So you guys, today I showed you two ways to mark out your design. And next week, I am going to be painting. We're gonna be painting, mixing milk paint and painting the design. So for the rest of this week, I'm gonna squeeze in some time to um, draw the rest of this design and I will go just go over because you can't really see it. Um, but I will go over this. The whole thing is going to be the hexagons and we're gonna be painting next week. So any questions at all, you guys, ask in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them and let me know what you're working on. Do you have any cool outdoor projects that you're working on? Are you able to find some creative time um, in the summer? I know it's hard because everybody's on the go and um, just being outside and we're finally free now, right? Some of us. So have a wonderful Thursday. Let me know what you're up to and happy painting.